We welcome you back to the steam room. Charles, this... Uh, this is I mean, this you, is big right uh, here, man. We, hey, I'm gonna say special, 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 special guest. This is basketball royalty. I mean, I'm sitting here doing a podcast now with three basketball Hall of Famers, uh, and in this week in which we lost uh, the great John Thompson, uh, it is our pleasure to welcome into the steam room uh, Patrick Ewing and Dikembe Mutombo. Guys, we can't thank you enough for making the time in your day to come and, and spend some time with me and the Chuckster. Well, it's just like, you know, I said, I've been knowing both of you guys for a lot of years. Charles, we've been, you know, we've been battling for years. So once I got that call, you know I had to show up. We appreciate thank you, it. Very thank you, John, for having me. I really appreciate that. I so think uh, my first my first question is Patrick, when did you first meet uh, Coach Thompson? My first the first time I've ever I ever had the opportunity to to meet him was I was a sophomore in high school. They came he came to Boston to to recruit this other uh, young man by the name of Paul Little, and we were playing against them in in the in the tournament uh, in high school tournament, and you know. He said, what he, the, what he told me is that once he saw me play, he told his assistant coach, forget the other guy. <laughs> Get me him, and I will, I'll, I'll, I'll win the championship. And after the game, I, I see him and Red Auerbach walking to our locker room. Uh, and that was the first time I, I got to meet him. I was like, I didn't know who he was. But I knew who Red Red Auerbach was. I'm like, oh my God, that's Red Auerbach. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, that was my first time meeting him. To what about you, Deke? Yeah, were you playing intramural ball at the time you first met him? Uh, no, it was like a, a week after I arrived in the U.S. Uh, at Georgetown University. Then it was uh, student bodies that came to get me, and they said that. Uh, um, the basketball coach want to meet you. They know that you're here. They want to meet you. Then uh, they took me there at McDonald's gym. And uh, when I realized that this tall giant uh, man walk out the door and look at me and say, how you doing, son? So I just got so scared and I panicked. And uh, I didn't know it was that big. And it was the first time for me to see somebody that tall can look at me eye to eyes with that crazy look and say, hey, <laughs> how you doing? Welcome to the United States of America. You know, Patrick, I said on the show the other night, uh, I said Patrick Ewan, Dikembe Mutombo, and Alonzo Mourn are three of the best men I've ever met. I'm not talking about basketball players. I'm about three of the best men I ever met. And there, there, there's only two coaches, and I said this, there's only two coaches that I know where the players tell me he wanted us to be great men. He didn't worry about the basketball. And that was John Thompson and Dean Smith. Yes. And I, I, how much did he talk to y'all about education and doing the right thing off the court? All the time. All the time. You know, he, he had that basketball, which we still have in our offices. You know, this, the, the, the deflated basketball. You know, and one of the things he would always talk to us about is that at some point the ball, the ball is going to stop bouncing. Either you're going to make it to the NBA and it's going to stop eventually, or you're not going to make it to the NBA and you're going to have to go to find something else to do right after college. So he would do a lot of different things. He'd bring a lot of people in and individuals in from different walks of life for us to talk to. James Brown was one of them. You know, James Brown, who played basketball, who went to Harvard and, and became – one of the best broadcasters in, in, in sports. So he came in, we had people from Coca-Cola, people from McDonald's, all people from, uh, who look like us, who, who, uh, who play basketball, but then you know, went into the other uh, side of business. Uh, Dikembe, yes. I, when I, was, I, I was talking to Michael Jackson the other day, uh, the old point guard, and he was talking about that same thing. He talked about the fact that when you were going to play for John, you better go to you better go to class. You 
you better you better be up on current events, not just in the United States, but around the world. And he said there were even etiquette classes so that when you went out later in life and you went to a dinner, you knew which fork to use, which glass was yours, all of that. Tell me, yes. tell me about tell me about that and his and his emphasis on on things beyond the basketball court. And like uh, Coach Patrick said, is it was much bigger than that. Um, I just give I will relate more to me when I missed classes. I think my sophomore year because I was not feeling well. I decided that um, I would just go to the hospital on campus go see the dentist and have my tooth taken care of and go back to the dorm. And I missed my two classes. It was my history class and my philosophy class. Then late in the afternoon, I said, okay, it's four o'clock. Let me start walking uh, to McDonald's gym for practice. As soon then I walk there, honey, he just let me have it. He let me have it. He said, son, what are you doing here? I don't want to see you here. You came here to go to school. You left Congo to come to go to school in America. You didn't come here to play basketball. Mm -hmm. And see, so if you don't want to go to class, you're going home today. And I thought he was kidding at the beginning. Um, I was still young and um, uh, he said, go to the locker room and there's a plane ticket there waiting for you. And uh, there's a cab waiting for you by the dorm and get out of here. And uh, I went to buy my locker and there was a one way ticket way back to Kinshasa. And I was like, coach, I'm not going. So I start crying. He called me any kind of name. I cannot say that here because you don't take it. <laughs> but uh, I just went inside to his office and uh, there was late Miss Friendly there, our academy advisor. And I just sat down and I cried like for four hours while my teammates were practicing. I said, coach, I'm not leaving America. I'm staying. You're not going to let me go. So later on that evening, and he said, okay, you can stay, just don't miss class no more. I never miss class after that. Dikembe, what did, aside, you know, we've talked about his emphasis, John Thompson's emphasis on, on uh, everything outside the court, but as a player, what did he demand of you? Uh, coach demand uh, your hard work, want you to be productive every given night when you walk there in practice. There was no day off. He wanted to be much better than you were yesterday. And then he wanted to do what he was asking you to do. Um, for me, he was not worried about me scoring no points, learn how to improve my offense. He said, son, every given night, you walk in in practice. I want you to challenge Alonzo Morning and then your best ability and trying to block as many shots as you can and rebound the ball. And if you can do it, I will make you a millionaire. And you don't have to go and look for a job somewhere. And uh, <laughs> he did that. And uh, he was able to help me to go out to becoming uh, the kind of player that I've become and kind of person and go and make a difference in the world. You know, Pat, how big of an influence was Coach Thompson you decided to become a coach? Um, you know, when, when I decided to, to, that I was going to stop playing, I met with Michael and Michael offered me a job, uh, to come to Washington and coach with the wizards. And one of the things when I, when I spoke to coach about it and he told me that you have to tackle this the same way that you tackle that, uh, being the best player that you can. He said, there's a lot of people, a lot of great players who, decide to do something after after they finish and they just go about it half ass he said you have to put in all the, the put in the hard work put in the time the effort that that you go that you did going into being the best one of the best players that you could be as do the same thing as coach uh, into coaching and that's what i did so here's it he didn't start me into coaching but he definitely made sure that i knew that it was going to take a lot of hard work to to uh, be the best player I, I became. And it's funny because I'm working in Washington and Jeff Van Gundy was doing TV and he came, he was, you know, the coach, the, 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 the talent, they come and watch practice. And it was then that Jeff saw that 
you know, that the, the, the way that I was, ta- uh, 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 was uh, coaching was the same way that I went, I, I, I did uh, as a player. And that's, and when he got a job that, that after the season was over in Houston, he offered me a, a job to come to Houston. So that's how I became, I came, became a, a coach in Houston because he saw that I was, I was channeling my effort uh, into being the best coach that I, that I, that I could be. Uh, and I wasn't just out there just, you know, I'm Patrick, you I'm a great basketball player. I want to be a coach. He saw that I was, I was working my butt off to try to be the best coach I can possibly be. Even after all these years, Patrick, he, the, John Thompson casts a long shadow. Uh, and when you walk into that, that spot and you are holding down the same job that he had for almost 30 years right. uh, as the head coach of Georgetown, how did you, um, how did that make you feel? And what did you feel you had to live up to? Uh, well, you know, he's a, he's a tough uh, man to try to live up to. You know, uh, he cast, like you said, a, a, a large shadow. But I, I did not, you know, the way I look at it is I'm not going to be Coach Thompson. I'm going to be Patrick Ewing. You know, uh, I was fortunate enough that, you know, he was still here with us when I first got the job. And I could always, you know, he either look over to the, to the side and practice because he was always at practice or pick up the phone and call him for any advice that, that I might need. You know, I'm, I'm going to miss him. My heart is heavy. All our hearts are heavy because he was an important figure in all of our lives. Uh, but it, if it wasn't for him, I would not be here uh, at Georgetown. He's the one that taught me into, into taking this job or, or trying to uh, interview for the job. And then I got it because my goal and my focus was on trying to be a head coach in the NBA. He said that you haven't got one or you haven't gotten an opportunity yet. So you need to try and uh, try uh, another avenue. So, you know, I, I applaud him. I love him. I, we, we, we will all miss him. Um, but I'm enjoying uh, being a coach here. I'm not going to be John Thompson. I, I, I hope that one day I'll be able to win a championship. Uh, but all I can do is be Patrick and be the best uh, version of Patrick that I can be. Hey, Pat. You know, obviously, we got a lot of stuff going on today in the world. How much did Coach talk to y'all about social issues? Oh, he talked about it all the time. <laughs> you know, it, 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 that's one of the things that was great about him. You know, even though we, there wasn't any social media and, you know, uh, we weren't really, didn't really understand that we, we all have a, had a platform to, to speak up. He was one that he talked about it. He showed it by, you know, walking out in, in those or protesting those games that he that he talked about that he protested. Uh, he talked it up, talk about it, all the th- different things that he had to endure, you know, over his lifetime. You know, being when he first got the job at Georgetown, walking in and seeing a noose with a with a with a with a negative sign uh, note on it. But he spoke about uh, everything that that it was happening in, in society. And, you know, that's one of the things I loved about him. You know, he, he wasn't just uh, a basketball coach to us. He was a person that wanted us to elevate ourselves to be the best, uh, not only players that we could be, but also the best men that we could be. And that's one of the things I, lo- I, I loved about him and I will miss about him. Because uh, I know Coach uh, Patrick had played a couple of years before me, but I was there. 1988, when he walked away from the game at the Capitol Center because of the Proposition 38. Um, we didn't know, as a players, we didn't know we were just sitting there. We were all shocked. And soon then, the referee blew the whistle. And we look at the bench and trying to get some direction which play we're going to run. Next time we knew, coach was just walking away. And that will make me to remember that this man fought so hard for so many African Americans in this country. There's so many issues that we are facing right now that resonate in our life that go way, way, way back. And Coach been fighting for the same thing since he got to Georgetown. And he fought for it all the way to the 80s, to the 90s. And uh, even when he left, uh, the coaching career, 
he was still talking about it. So he was not afraid for us, uh, his players, to go out there and fight for something that we believe in and making a change. He believed in a changing in this world. And he made the University of Georgetown to be the kind of university that it is today. Otherwise, nobody would not talk about our school. And he changed the culture of basketball because of Coach Thompson. Hey, man, I, I just want to tell you two guys, um, uh, I think y'all are both, y'all obviously Hall of Famers, but y'all just great men. And I, and, I, and I said the same thing to Alonzo, and I forgot about Michael Jackson, who actually one of the reasons I'm, I'm working at Turner. And I know this has been a tough week uh, for you guys, and I just want to thank y'all for taking time because I think what Coach's message was is so important, and we need to keep that message, especially today, the environment we're in. Yes. Uh, you know, you can't, he couldn't have raised two better men than you guys. So I just want to thank y'all for taking time to share some memories. No, nah, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, and you know I what? I will do my best to stay in touch. Yes, you do. As, <laughs> as tough as these couple days have been, and especially for guys who have played for him, it's, uh, it's good to see you be able to remember him fondly with laughter. You know, and it's and it's very appropriate for the time because you guys were uh, were special parts of his life. He was obviously a special part of your lives, and uh, let's just let's just rest with those good memories, man. That, oh, uh, definitely. Fortunate, you know, fortunate enough to play for him. It, it's uh, even though our 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 hearts are are heavy, and we are de definitely sad with his his passing. It's also got to be a celebration of life. You know, all the things that he's accomplished, not only as a coach, but also as a man. You know, it's our duty as his, his disciple uh, to, to make sure that when, we're not just crying and, and being sad. We have to celebrate the, the, the journey and celebrate the things that he has uh, accomplished. Thank you, Coach. Um, we will miss him. Yes, Great sir. teacher. You cannot go a month without not calling him. That's what kind of man he was. Otherwise, he will find you. <laughs> <laughs> to Kevin and, Matumbo, uh, Patrick Ewing, thank you. I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss that phone call. I'm glad you fell in. Enjoy, man. Hey, guys, hey, hey guys, thanks for joining us today. Great talking Great to you all. If you guys had a farm, what kind of fruits or vegetables would you grow? My guest is uh, blackberries for Ernie and jalapeno peppers for Charles. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. You would definitely be right with the blackberries, going back to the, uh, the blackberry moments I talk about in my book. Um, those sweet, unpredictable moments that kind of make life extraordinary. So, yeah, blackberries is big. In fact, we, we have some in Cheryl Ann's garden here. She's got some raised beds over here on the side yard. <clears throat> tomatoes and uh and blackberries and peppers and all kind of stuff and peaches um but i would also if i had my own garden uh you'd have to have fried okra in it not just okra ah. it would have to be it would have to come up as fried okra that would be awesome see i'm a big fried okra guy i would yeah, eat fried okra all, all day long first of all okra is disgusting let's get that out the way fried okra uh, fried it's, it's, okra well, I, I haven't tried fried okra, but it can't be. Oh, in come on. No, no, I'm not eating that. Wait, so do jalapenos grow out of the ground or on a tree? They're, on a, they're a plant. They're a plant. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, on my farm, which I've never been on the farm, uh, uh, even though I grew up in Alabama, I'm probably going to do uh, apples or pears. Those are my two favorite fruits. Uh, so if if I if I'm gonna be on a farm, first of all, pears pears are the greatest thing ever, uh, but apples are a close second. Um, so that, that that'd be my two. Tomatoes, Chuckster. You ever just have a tomato sandwich? No. Oh, let me let me tell you something about the joy of the tomato sandwich on toasted or grilled bread. Slice up a of uh, like a homegrown tomato, maybe a little mayo on the bread, salt and pepper. Tomato sandwich, very underrated. Very underrated. Wait, with no meat? No meat. 
Just a tomato sandwich. Is a sandwich a sandwich without meat on it? Is, is peanut butter and jelly a sandwich? That's a good point. That was a nice Thank comeback, you. Ernie. That's a nice Thank comeback you. right there. You, I didn't think your mind could work that fast, but that's a nice comeback. Kind of surprised myself with that one. Next caller. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Dustin, and I'm from Arizona. You guys do such a great job tackling all the serious issues, and also you guys have great sense of humor. Um, I just wanted to say that. But also, I know you guys were looking for lyrics for your theme song, so I came up with some lyrics. I'm a terrible singer, but I will try to <laughs> sing it for you. <clears throat> Chuck and Ernie in the steam room, come and join us in the steam room. Chuck and Ernie in the steam room, leave your towel on in the steam room. Thank you, guys. <laughs> what? Leave, leave your towel on in the steam room. I, I like well, it. I, I wish you, you know, me, I wish he had told us what city he lives in in Arizona, since I live in Arizona. Oh, uh, man. But, man, uh, uh, that he's right about one thing. He's not a great singer. Yeah, uh, but that that's I, – I like that a lot. Have we, got, have we got some more? Chuck and Ernie in the steam room. Come and join us in the steam room. Chuck and Ernie in the steam room. Leave your towel on in the steam room. That is, that, that is, is what? that's tremendous, man. Cause I, had, cause I had said, okay, so he's doing this. And then to hear it with that thump and stand up bass. Now that, I think, I think he's, I think he's onto something, man. Dude, don't quit your day job, uh, brother. Don't quit your day job. It, it was catchy. Uh, that was funny though. Man, that is catchy. That is, I'm going to be singing that the rest of the day.